Yesterday was Hay of the fifth day of the month of Menachem Av, which is the Hilula, the Yotzeit of the Arizal. Arizal, Rabbi Yitzchak Luri, the author or the teacher, the main teacher of Kabbalah, we say Arizal, but really it is Ari Hachai. Hachai meaning Zal refers to Zichoy Nelevracha, of blessed memory that we say about somebody who is passed away. Hachai, that means he's alive. And indeed, his teachings, his guidance is alive today. It is what guides us. It is what leads us today in all aspects of our lives and we'll come to it in a moment. But what's, in this, what's interesting is also the word Zal, Zayin Lamed, corresponding to 37, according to some, he lived 37 years, others claim 38 years. But whatever it is, he lived a very short life. Now let's go back a little bit of history here. In, 49, in 1492, Jews were expelled from Spain. Some, the bulk of them, many I should say, went to discover the Americas. The bulk of them went to East Turkey. Many of them, though, a number of them went to Eretz Yisrael and settled in the city of Tzfas. Now, Tzfas was a very, very prominent city because for the next 80 years, there was a phenomenal renaissance of Jewish life in this mystical city to the point that the Rav of the city was known other than Rabbi Yosef Karo, the author of the Bet Yosef, the author of the Shulchan Aruch. The al Shech HaKadosh, the one who wrote the Lachadoide, was the Magid of the community. Kabbalist was also Reb Moshe Cordovero, known as the, for the author of the Padres Haramak, the, excuse me, the Ramak who wrote the Padres Remonim, I'm sorry. Padres, the Garden of Remonim of the pomegranates, meaning deep concepts of Kabbalah. But the most famous Kabbalist of them all that existed, that lived at that time in this area, was Reb Yitzchak Luri, Reb Isaac Luri who in his short life of 38 years, because of his extremely lofty soul, to whom all secrets of Torah and the world of creation were revealed, his teachings were eventually recorded by his faithful student who only met him in the last two years of the result's life. Interesting. Within two years, Reb Chaim Vital recorded all the writings, all the teachings of the Arizal, which is called Kisveho Arizal. Because the Arizal himself, or the Ariachai, didn't record anything, didn't write anything. But what his teachings did was, first of all, it brought explanation into the Zohar. The Zohar, which was revealed by Rabbi Shimon Ber Yechoi, the first book that, you know, of Kabbalah, of mystical teachings, Without Kabbalah, without the teachings of the Arizal, we can read it, and many do. But to understand, to make some sense out of it, one needs the Kabbalah teachings. Reb Chaim Vital writes that today, talking then, how much more so today, it's a mitzvah legal chachma. It's a mitzvah to reveal this chachma. The world is ready for the revelation of the deep, mystical insights of Torah. And although at that time it was still for a select group, eventually with the Baal Shem Tov and then with the Alter Rebbe, with the Hasidic teachings, it has become more accessible even to us in our days. And today we know very well that Hasidus is the spice, is the life, is the savior of the Jewish community. Interesting anecdote which I want to share. A particular Erev Shabbat, the Arizal was walking with his students close to Shabbat in Tzfas, and he turned around to his students and says, Boyo, let us all go right now and welcome Shabbos in Yerushalayim. Everybody's ready to go. One student says, can I please notify my wife before rejoining? And the Arizal looked and said, we've just missed the opportunity of going to Yerushalayim and welcoming Mashiach. 
frightening thought. The explanation to this is given. When the Arizal, when your Rebbe, when the Tzaddik, the Moshe Rabbeinu, the Nasi Adador says, let's do something, one has to realize there is absolutely nothing else in this world but that. The fact that the student still wanted to notify, not ask permission, but to notify his wife was an indication of lack of total, complete commitment to the Arizal. A message to us. We have to be totally committed to the Moshe Rabbeinu of our generation. And he calls upon us to study the laws of the Beis Amigdosh, to do siyumim every day, and this hastens the gula. Let do this with unequivocal commitment and devotion, and we will